Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Open Door Hypnosis TV. I'm Shara Prophet, certified clinical hypnotherapist, speaker, teacher, and coach. In a previous video that I did on brainwashing, we discussed the movie Get Out and how they misused the term hypnosis when what they were really using was brainwashing techniques. We also discussed that for mind control to work, we must first buy into the idea that our minds can be controlled in the first place. And at the end of that video, I posed this question. Why would anyone want us to believe that we can be controlled? Well, for something to work, we must believe that it's possible because beliefs condition us to accept and expect certain results. And conditioning starts from the moment that we come out of the womb. We're inundated with information on how to live in this life and fit into this physical human existence. We're taught how to take in information and not only what to believe, but how to believe it. We conform to our social constructs, which is defined in the Merriam-Webster dictionary as an idea that has been created and accepted by the people in a society. For example, if you don't go to this Ivy League college and receive this top scale education, then you'll only be able to get a certain kind of job, okay? And if you have this certain kind of job, then you'll only be able to make this amount of money. You can only afford this certain size house, living in a particular spot in town or a particular city, and then you can only afford to drive a certain kind of car. Now there's those of those of us who do the opposite and kind of go against the, the societal norm and maybe we don't go to college or we don't end up working in a high powered firm, but still receive the same rewards and success, we're considered an anomaly or an exception to the rule. It's these ideas and beliefs that stem from what I refer to as belief systems and they've been set up throughout his history in our society. There's seven primary belief systems. They're not in any particular order. Health. Under the umbrella of health, I've included medical, pharmaceutical, and food. Government and politics. Science. Police and military. Education. Religion. Financial and banking institutes. I didn't add media because it's more of a vessel through which these systems get their information to us. These are industries and corporations, but again, I refer to them as belief systems because they've shaped how we see the world, how we take it in, and how we relate to it. Think about how each of these systems have laid the groundwork for our life by setting laws and regulations. If our beliefs can be controlled, then our lives can be controlled. Beliefs are essential to our everyday automatic behaviors. And these belief systems get a handle on our belief structure as early as birth. A stranger handles a newborn baby upon its entry into this world instead of its mother, who is a familiar and shares the same DNA and has housed this baby for nine months in the womb. Straight from the womb, the baby is you know, already handled and washed in energy that is not familiar to that child. And it could or could not hold positive loving vibes. In fact, when a child is born, the mother is probably the second or the third person to actually make contact with the infant. Now, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with doctors or someone else assisting in the birth of a child. Um, everything that's here is here for a purpose. And if that skill wasn't needed, then it, it wouldn't be here. But this is a perfect example of how, how early the systems are ingrained in our belief structures in the subtlest ways. We're taught to rely on something outside of ourselves or someone outside of ourselves before we're taught to trust our own intuition and internal instincts. And that is something that we have to learn how to cultivate on our own as we grow and learn and get experienced in this world. The societal norm is to take medication when we're sick, rely on the government to have our backs, place our trust in politicians, put our lives in the hands of doctors, police, and military, leave it up to teachers and school boards to educate our children, 
look to the banks and the financial institutions to give us loans in order for us to have money to acquire the things that we desire. We expect science labs to feed us and, you know, solve world hunger. And then we pray to an external deity, expecting it to answer our prayers. When belief in our own abilities to trust and to think for ourselves and to control our own lives and our own bodies is skewed, that is when we become susceptible to brainwashing and mind control. And it is the constant exposure to beliefs that perpetuate the fear, the doubt, and the worry that goes against that natural law that says, know thyself. And when this happens, this causes the destruction of the self. Distraction, confusion, misdirection, and fear is a rinse and repeat recipe that is used by these systems to disorient our beliefs and our sense of self. But thankfully there's hope. With trust, curiosity, and courage, we can find the truth of who we are. We really can. And it is in that discovery where we, where we start to see through the veil of the ignorance and the deceit and the lies. And it's from that point that we can become more discerning. We can start to tune in to our own inner wisdom that guides us to that true freedom. And that's when you'll start to notice that health and peace and trust and joy become your new social norms. And taking risks that used to scare you start to become the natural progression of our life's purpose. And gradually, the fear of the unknown turns into excitement and the eagerness to explore more. Knowing who we are for real and not what we've been told or what we have been identified as, such as black, white, or male, or female, that puts us on the path to profound joy and living a superior quality of life. To make real positive changes, we must do things differently and think outside the box. We have to think outside of those social constructs and think outside of those belief systems, okay? A great way to start is reconnecting and strengthening our connection to the self. An easy process to, is to just take some time throughout our day, and even if it's just for one minute or five minutes, clear your mind, and then you're gonna ask the question, who am I? And then just get really still, really silent, and observe what comes through. Perhaps it'll be a thought, a sensation, a feeling, or a knowing, Maybe it will come in audibly, like a word, a song, or a conversation. For those of us with vivid imaginations, it could come through as a vision. Just be open to it. Whatever form it takes, however it comes, be open and observe the information. And know that sometimes the information may not come in that exact moment. It might come later that day, or it might come days later, but it will come and you will receive the information. This is how we begin to break free of old paradigms, of old belief systems that have held us hostage in our own minds and in our own homes and lives for far too long. The world is changing, my friends, and the consciousness on this planet is shifting and it's happening very, very, very fast. And now, more than any time in history, now is the time to get to know who we are on a higher and deeper level. So in the next video, I will be doing a hypnotic journey on reconnecting with your divine self. So be sure to subscribe to this channel because you don't want to miss that. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave some comments or questions down below because I love interacting with you guys. And I will be doing more actual hypnosis journeys on YouTube so you can get a taste of what a hypnosis session is like with me. If you are a YouTube subscriber to my channel, you will receive a special rate of $45 for a 30-minute phone or Skype session. So please contact me for more details on that.
And if you're interested in attending my free monthly online workshops, simply click the link below to subscribe to my email list. These workshops are 60 to 90 minutes and they're available exclusively for members of the Open Door Hypnosis community. My workshops cover a, a range of subjects, mainly dealing with uh, personal development, hypnosis, the mind, personalities, and things like that. Uh, some of the topics cover um, finding out if you can be hypnotized, stress management, body syndromes, past life regression, rewriting your life script for success, learning personality types for relationship strategies, and so much, much, much more. Please remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Google+. And remember to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Your subscriptions help me to get this information to the masses because it is stuff that we need to know. Um, and some of us are already in on it. Some of us already have this information, but there are some of us that don't have it. So if you, the more you subscribe, the more you like, the more you share these videos, the more you are playing a major role in getting this information out to the masses and helping people wake up and realize that it is time to change this and this, okay? So I thank you guys so much for your time, your attention, and your energy. I love, love doing these videos. And I just want you to remember that you are the key to a new you. You have the power to control your destiny. You have the power to change your life and to create that divine, perfect, superior quality of life that you so deserve and I know that you desire. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I do look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, peace and blessings, much love. Bye-bye.